Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Revelation chapter 17. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials. We just, we just went through those vials. And talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great ore that sitteth upon many waters. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Now, we're not talking about sexual and alcohol. It may look like it. We are talking about a religious foundation that is set in the world. That nations have met with this system we're going to talk about. And have bought themselves into this system. Have given themselves to this system. Have given the revenue. And from the revenue and from the, from the masses and from the, uh, uh, the suspense and the time of the medias, all the effort given to this system, they also have gained rewards. They also have gotten something from this uh, system of religion. And God counts them all into one filth. So he carried me away in the spirit. Holy Spirit, into the wilderness. Interesting place. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast. Isaiah 1.18. Full of names of blasphemy. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 real quick. Revelation 13, 1. Okay. Bible sticks. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise out of the sea, Mediterranean, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. All right, let's go back to chapter 17. That was the Antichrist. Full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. This beast has been identified as the Antichrist with this woman's writing. This woman giddy up upon the Antichrist. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. Royalty. You care to check out one religion system about how they're dressed? And decked with gold. That's the high value of the world, gold. And precious stones, gems. Notice how she imitates the rewards of Christians at the judgment seat of Christ. And pearl. She's got a pearls necklace. So this woman is on top of the Antichrist. Purple and red. Bright red. Which this time would be a very hard expensive dye. She has gold. She has precious stones and pearls. She also imitates New Jerusalem. Now, God has a city, 
and Satan has a city. God has a bride, Satan has a bride. And well, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Now what religious organization has a golden cup? And they say that's the mass and they say that is the blood of Jesus Christ. And God says it's filthiness of her fornication. Show that one to your Catholic friend. Because we're going to get more into this and you cannot deny the Catholics. And upon her forehead was a name written. She must have one big forehead. Mystery Babylon the Great. Well, you stay here. Let me go over to First Peter, the last chapter. Let me come over here real quick, Peter. First Peter five, thirteen. The church that is at Babylon. Oh, there's Peter, the first boat. There we are. First Peter five, thirteen. That's us. That's the church. Well, Mystery Babylon. No, that's not us. It's not us. How dare you take this Bible and apply it to us? Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. You know who this mother is of? The Protestants and their movements throughout the whole world. Baptists are not Protestants, and Protestants are not Baptists. Protestants, all they did was start a new church and try to clean up the church they came out of. And done the same wicked deed. As you would see the pilgrims coming to America and begin congregationalism, and it's just the same thing of this religion. You start persecuting Bible believers. And you start banning the Bible. And you start killing And I, John, saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. She has in her mouth the blood of saints. And yet she proclaims that she's got saints. God has charged this woman killing God's children with blood and in the tribulation period they are going to drink that Jewish blood now they may not have drank it during the times of the, of the dark ages they might not have drank it with with the Walt Disneyans they may not have drank it with, with the Anabaptists but they proclaim from their own words as much as Lutheranism and other religions that that cup is the blood of Jesus Christ, the martyr. You can't deny that. They just give it different long big words that you, know, you want to pronounce. And when I saw her, John, now watch this. I wondered with great admiration. Now, admiration means wonder. I wondered with a great wonder, and the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? So, again, the date here, they say AD 96, and it may be the most perfect date, I don't know. Here is John, one of the twelve, including Judas, okay? Walked three and a half years with Jesus. He was of Peter, James, and John, the most important disciple of Jesus. Turned apostle. Working in Israel, witnessing the gospel of the Jews, getting them saved. We have the gospel of John, the greatest gospel written to the church age on church age doctrine. The last gospel written. We have 1st, 2nd, 3rd John written with great admiration for the Christian. We got the book of Revelation, which... which People of the Bible and churches, they just, you know, salivate. Again, the date, A.D. 96, and I don't know. 
And in AD 96, let's say that is the day. John is looking at this woman, this religious system. Who would kill Christian? Who is this wicked woman? Which shows you that this religion system was not around when John was living. John is taken off into the future to see future events. He sees a religious organization set up there by God. And, and he looks at that thing like, what on earth is happening to us? And this is the one that's coming out of Nero. Who would light Christians up on poles for his garden party saying, they're the light of my party. With that, with James losing his neck, Peter would be crucified upside down. John has been put into a boiling liquid left on Platmus to die. All the disciples minus John suffer violent death. And John looks at this woman like, What are you showing me? I'll tell you what, John. I'll tell you a book, John, that was not written in your time. Fox's Book of Martyrs. I, I remember accounts about one. They would take people. They would sew them in bags with a with a snake, a cat, and other animals. So and throw you into the river so you would be gouged and bitten and then drowned with all these animals trying to suffer. All these torture devices that this institution has made to kill Christians. And John looks at that like, if Nero wasn't bad enough, this system is the worst. And all John was taken off in the future and looks back and says, man, what is going on here? This was to John's surprise. And even the angel testified, why marvel? I mean, I thought, didn't Jesus tell you, John, marvel not, the world hates you? But look at what this system is doing. I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her. So kind of like, this is the Antichrist burden. This is his yoke, his religion, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not. So he's not going to be around forever. And shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. And go into perdition, ruin, entire loss. That's the false prophet. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder. Ooh. Ah. Isn't that great? Whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. So it looks like possibly that our names are in that book by the foreknowledge of God. God knew who would, who would obey and God knew who wouldn't. And now when you get to Calvinism, they mess that all up. They will say, well, see your names in that book. It's already written, so you're already pre-damned or you're pre-go to heaven. You can't do nothing about it. No, God has a foreknowledge. God knows everything before it happens. You can't... I don't know what I'm trying to think. You, you can't surprise God. There's no way you could have a surprise party for God. Absolutely not. So these people who are lost and will be lost and will not get right, they will have a great love for the Antichrist, for the false prophet and Satan. It will be your movie stars. It will be your singing people. They will ooh and ah. Man hasn't changed. Nothing new under the sun. When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. So he wasn't there. He's not there yet, but he will. And we already know he's going to end up in the lake of fire. 
Here is the mind which has wisdom. You want to know something? Now this is not written. This is written not to the people who are not saved, who won't get saved, who won't. This has got to be written to somebody who's going to read this. Seventeen Revelation has no being for me to know anything. Unless I want to teach a church doctrine that's wrong, that I'm going to live through the tribulation period, but I'm not going to. I've been raptured in chapter 4, and I've been in heaven ever since. Somebody's going to read Revelation and tribulation period, and they're going to come to chapter 7. Yeah, I want to know what's going on. What do we do? Jews will turn to Revelation. Jews will see a book in the Bible that says Hebrews. That will get their attention no matter what the church says. Hebrew, hey, that's our book. Well, let's see what it says. Melchizedek, Enos, Enoch, I mean, Abel, Noah, Moses, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Joshua, Samson, David, aren't they all Jewish? There, there's no church names in that book. The seven heads are seven mountains. All right, let me, let's stop here. Uh, the seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. So this woman that comes on the beast, she sitteth on seven mountains. Now let me tell you what the seven mountains are of Rome. I may have to try to spell them, but uh, Avatine, Kalion, and you can look these up. On the internet to say seven hills or seven mountains of Rome, capital capital line, Esquiline, Palatine, Corianine, 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 about Vinanine. Rome is seated upon her city. Seven hills. Seven mountain with a woman that's arrayed in purple and scarlet. She's got a golden cup. She's got. Let me give you some other information here. Now this they say can't be proved. Some of them, some of them can be proved. Some of them. Been, I don't know who would want to imitate Revelation 17, but in Africa you got Yadi, Cameron, Ibadan, and Nigeria, and the Americas. Albany, New York is supposedly built on seven hills. Athens, Texas. Cincinnati, Ohio. Ellicott City, Maryland. Guadalajara, Ecuador. Lynchburg, Virginia. Nixa, Missouri. Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Providence, Rhode Island. And these, let me give you the names of this one. Christian Hill. College Hill, Const uh, Constitution Hill, Federal Hill, Smith Hill, Tock Wilton Hill, and Way Boston Hill. Rome, Georgia. St. Paul, Minnesota. Valley, Jello, Jello, Venezuela. San Francisco, California. Seattle, Washington. Seven Hills, Ohio. Somerville, Massachusetts. You don't think called Massachusetts? The, oh, well, was not, as soon as I said that, now it just flew out my head. It was their new. Was it their new Jerusalem, the new city of hope? Statlin Island, New York. Victoria, Argentina. Worcester, Massachusetts. Yonkers, New York. In Asia, Amen, Jordan. Jerusalem in Israel. Mount Scopus. Mount Olivet, Mount of Corruption, Mount Ophiel, the original Mount Zion, the new Mount Zion, and the hill which the Antonine Fortress was built. Jerusalem has seven mountains. Mecul, Mecca, Saudi Arabia, Munabaya, Tyra, Iran, forget this pronunciation of India. Europe, just tons and tons of cities that claim to be named and built upon seven hills. 
And yet, what true city matches this woman with a golden cup in her hand? Do a search. The, and there are seven kings. Well, it can't be America. America's never had a king on her soil. And we've been ruled by a king, but, you know, we put the tea in the ocean and stuff like that. Five are fallen. Oh. One is, right now, presently, he, he's in the rain. And that means at the time of this prophecy is being told where John is in the future. Five are dead. One is ruling. And the other is not yet come. Well, that's the Antichrist. He shows up at the three and a half years. So before the three and a half years, there are five kings. They're gone. One is presently. And then the Antichrist comes. Remember our previous study in Revelation? When the, when the Antichrist comes, who gives him the seat and the authority? Satan. The great dragon. So the one that is reigning right now is Satan, and then he'll turn it all over to the Antichrist. Satan will reign. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, he comes part of that seven, and goes in perdition, ruin. God will cast him right off in the lake of fire, the Bible says, and the false prophet. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as of yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. So they're not going to have a, a, a full kingdom, but they're going to have a reign of a kingdom. And even Jesus said the imitation that the the Satan and Antichrist will have. Jesus said that there will be some that will sit with him on his throne and will reign one hour. You got a complete imitation of Jesus Christ in Satan, in the Antichrist, in the false prophet. They, these have one mind. They think together. They think alike. And shall give their power and strength unto the beast. That's what Satan did. That's what we read. The ultimate power in the great tribulation period will be given to the Antichrist. These shall make war with the Lamb, capital L. And the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, and we know who that is. And they that are with him. Now who is with Jesus when he comes back? are called chosen and faithful well, you can't say that for a lot of Christians today for a lot of Christians today that will be a new name of what they're doing today we will be known as chosen and faithful when we come back with Jesus Christ here we are I've been chosen by God but I haven't really been that faithful And he says unto me, the waters, he said waters, 17.1, which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth. You say, well, Rome doesn't sit on any water. Our peoples, multitudes, and nations, and tongues. And check out whatever gala event that Rome and the Pope has. And watch how many the pictures on how many people are there. The whole world in tribulation period will make their pilgrimage to the Antichrist. An artificial Jew in the in the trip in the new in the Old Testament. I'll get it right. You know, the three times they would have to appear before God in Jerusalem. Well, the Antichrist is going to have that too. You're going to have to go to me. And I don't think you're going to say, "Well, I'll pass. I don't feel well." And I don't think anybody's going to want to do that. As much love they're going to have for him. And the ten horns which thou sawest 
upon the beast. These shall hate the whore. The system. So Jesus said, if a kingdom goes against a kingdom, it cannot stand. Here you have a kingdom fighting a kingdom. Within the subjects, they're falling. As I'm going through videos right now about Babylon, even that happened in Babylon, while Belshazzar, he had within his own reign enemies of the state. America cannot stand any longer because you got the Democrats battling the Republicans, Republicans battling the Democrats, which are going against the independents. You got these people are going against these people, and, and you know we got the gun people fighting the people who are not with the gun, and the abortionists against the abortionists. We're just fighting each other. We're just killing each other. There is no unity. And step into a Bible-believing church and say, "I vote a Democrat," and see how much they'll love you. In a Bible believing church today in America. They shall hate the whore. Well, come on, people. Isn't there supposed to be love? And even the great tribulation period with Satan on it, there is no love because Satan doesn't know love. John 8 44. And shall make her desolate all by herself and naked. We got women doing that down here in Daytona Beach. And shall eat her flesh. I believe that's probably literal. Wouldn't you think by now the food is gone? With all the plagues? And burn her with fire. Well, Nero burnt his brain and blamed the Christian entity. History will repeat itself. He said, well, how can they eat this woman who was a sister? The priest. Maybe the, maybe the priest will have a lot more to do with altar boys than just nasty, nasty. Where, where's my son? I dropped him off for altar class. I don't know. Ran out of, ran, ran out of Jesus' body, I guess. You know. For God, for God, has put in their hearts to fulfill His will. <laughs> Thy will be done, God. To to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast. So the Antichrist is going to ruin this system when they make him God and on the mercy seat. Uh -uh -uh. You ain't going to have any of that religion. You're going to worship who? Who is going to be the main worship? It ain't going to be Mary. It's going to be his image. Because you ain't going to worship Jesus' mother now. we we got to get rid of that. I'll tell you who you're going to worship. This will be the Antichrist. You're going to worship me. Because you know what? I got my name. I got my number. And I got my mark. And if you don't receive that, death. Bring me some Jews so I can drink their blood. The Catholic Church is going to get their just dessert. They're going to eat her. As they have framed and gone against God's people, Satan himself will go against her. Do you see what Satan does to his own church? He destroys it. Muslims, we kill infidels. Well, guess what? The infidels are killing you. Duh! Wait till he plays a big trick on the Jehovah Witnesses. For God has put in their heart, has put, look at that, it hasn't even happened and God says it's already, the $4 to God, these people will be born 
And th God's not going to force them like he did Pharaoh. He just knows to the intent of their heart that, hey, I got something to be done. Oh, I'll do it. I know you would do it. You don't have to do it. Oh, I'll do it. Judas, you don't have to betray Jesus. You believe that? She could have sold that perfume and got all kinds of money, but she wasted it on him. Uh, priest, come here. I got to talk to you. You don't have to do this, Judas. He's got to go. Now, Jesus already knew it would be Judas. And Jesus already warned him, but Judas said, hey, I'll do it. I'll be more. And Jesus woe unto offenses that must come, but woe unto him that do the offense. Somebody's going to have to destroy this church. We'll be the person that does it. Because believe it or not, when the Catholic Church, or whatever this church system is, I believe the Catholic Church, when they're destroyed, Satan will definitely take the rule. And he'll be worse than the Catholic system. And I'm talking about Catholic. I'm not talking about individual Catholic. My family were Catholics. I'm talking about that system. That entire system called a corporate. The religion itself. The religion itself. There are Catholics that are in that church that are saved. They just don't know. They're afraid. Put his will to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast. That's the Antichrist. Unto the words of God shall be fulfilled. So they're going to fulfill the word of God, even Satan. And watch this. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city. She is a city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Now say, come on. You said Jerusalem has seven hills. Does Jerusalem reign over the earth? Let's take let's take right now. Islam is the big. ISIS is the big thing. What? I don't even know. What main leader, ruler of ISIS or Muslims travels all around the world and Russia accepts them, the President of the United States gives them the golden key, the Queen Elizabeth of, the, of Europe, I mean of the United Kingdom, gives that person, come on into our country, let me show you everything. What, what person in Poland said, hey, bring that guy over here, we want him. And he goes down and kisses the feet in, in, in the African and goes over to Mexico and all those people are poor and, and takes more of their money. What system, what religion? Even Donald Trump met with the Pope. And he's not even been in office over a year yet. And he tried to act like, oh, I didn't really want to go, but he went. And he went just before, I mean, he went just after he went to Israel. He went from Israel to the Pope. Whoa. And you go back and check your history, type in Google search. Which presidents met with any Pope? And you'll be quite shocked. Have we... I gotta be careful with this one. Have we ever had an official Muslim in the White House stand up and say, I am a Muslim? I mean, you're gonna run, oh, you know, Obama, I almost forgot his name. No, he never made the stand, I'm a Muslim. And you read through the, through, the, through the guidelines of the newspapers and the, the media tapes of the false news for Donald Trump was not the false news for Obama. He spoke of the Quran, but he never made the statement. I think he pledged to be the presidency on the Quran. But I'll tell you one president who fulfilled his statement and love for his church, John F. Kennedy, a devout Roman Catholic. And if you go to his grave today, he's got that eternal flame that's on his tomb that was paid by the taxpayer, I believe, or his rich family. You go look at the president's history, you find out, and you do a search, what religions were of the U.S. presidents. And I'll tell you what, 
You'll be amazed on how many Baptists are, or they're not. Check out the religions of the U.S. presidents. Check out how many times the Pope has come. Check out the ambassador. The reign of Baptists. All the world Baptists. That one person that represents all the Baptists. See where he There is none for the Baptist church. We don't have one demand ruler of the Baptist church. Some people say they're pastors, but... There's one religion where they got one person running around. And the world gives in. The United Nations will give one religion the ultimate floor time. Some of you did. I lost you during Obama. Well, I pray for his soul. Still do. I pray for John. I pray for Trump's soul. I pray for the Bush's souls. I've got letters by them. They, they claim to be saved, so I pray for them. One of them's not doing well. They're old. I pray for Jimmy Carter. But there's one worldwide system. And you, you can't refute that. That's been accepted by the world. 